million questions. I'll answer both these questions one by one. The first question was with respect to whether Hinduism is just a way of life or not. That judgment was delivered in the context of what? Ramakrishna Mission running to the Supreme Court saying, I'm a minority institution. I am not a part of mainstream Hinduism. Therefore, please recognize me as a minority institution, as a non-Hindu institution. They did so because they wanted to avoid the torture of the communist government in West Bengal, which was going after Hindu institutions. And therefore, they wanted the protection of minorityism. And that's why they went for this declaration in the first place. Now, as part of the discussion in the judgment on this particular issue, this line figures in the discussion where the court is asking itself whether the term religion can be strictly applied to Hinduism or not. Is the word dharma the same as religion is the question that the court was asking itself. And it came out to the conclusion that the concept of religion as we understand it today is a notion imported from Judeo-Abrahamic traditions which are very different from what we think of dharma here. I'll give you a simple example. Christ never called himself a Christian. Okay? Even Nanak did not call himself a Sikh. Zoroaster never called himself a Zoroastrian. But one gentleman called himself a certain identity, gave himself a certain identity. What does this tell you? As far as we are concerned, as far as the Indic identity is concerned, we have never deemed it fit to give our way of life the, uh, a bracket of a certain religion until we were forced to take up this identity because the word Hindu itself is not, is not something that comes from us. You'll only find Sanatan Dharma everywhere, but you'll not find Hindu anywhere. It comes from Sindh and therefore somebody said, anyone who lives within the or on this side of Sindh is a Hindu. That's how it came about. Therefore, the Supreme Court, when it says that Hinduism is a way of life, did not take away the status of Hinduism as a faith. It was only meant to say that Hinduism as a faith is not the same as any other religion. However, under Article 26, where it speaks of rights of religious denominations of the Constitution, all Hindu communities or all Hindu denominations are treated as religious denominations for the purposes of Article 26. Assuming that Hinduism were not at all a faith, or it were not at all a religion, and it was only a way of life, it would mean that all rights available to religion and religious institutions would not be available to Hindus at all. Therefore, anyone who says that the Supreme Court itself has said that, the Hindu, that Hinduism is not a religion and is a mere way of life is lying to himself or is lying to others, knowing fully well that's not what the Supreme Court said. Otherwise, let's look at it this way. You don't have rights under Article 25 because yours is not a religion in the first place, it's just a way of life. Your religious institutions don't have the right to run their own administration because, first of all, they don't represent a religion in the first place. So that's not right. That was a statement made only to distinguish Hinduism from other faiths. Second, as far as books are concerned, textbooks are concerned, I have to say this, that the party with the difference which came to power has turned out to be no different and is perhaps even worse. Because in the last three years that it has been in power, I have not seen a single credible initiative being taken to alter textbooks. And this is, again, it goes back to the same thing because they're scared of media backlash. They are scared of the backlash from the ecosystem, the intellectual ecosystem, which the other side has created. And since you're not in a position to respond to it, you've chosen to live with the status quo as opposed to mustering the guts to do something about it. Therefore, you'll come out with symbolic gestures once in a while, saying, let's introduce Sanskrit in the CBSC system again and replace German with Sanskrit. But beyond that, you have done nothing. There is an alternative suggestion which most of us have actually proposed. At least 2,000 to 3,000 schools exist, which are run by organizations, which are, which are not minority institutions. If those organizations and those schools choose to come out with a new board in themselves, then they can decide the curriculum for that particular board. Your problem is when you try to change the existing curriculum which applies to CBSE, NCRT, and all these books which apply to everyone. Why can you not push for a new board and a new curriculum that applies to yourself? 
You don't wish to read our textbooks, no problem. You don't wish to subscribe to our version of history, I don't have a problem. But why are you imposing your version of history on me? I must have the right to choose myself, and therefore, I am interested in creating a parallel universe where there are at least 2,000 to 3,000 institutions. The DAVs and all the schools run by, let's say, Indic cultural organizations, let's call it that way. If all those institutions come together, you have at least 3,000 schools. So that's one way of going about it. Do not hope for any delivery of goods on the civilizational front from this dispensation, at least at this point of time. That's my lesson, and I learned this lesson in the first year or the second year. Because at the end of the day, any political party, regardless of which ideological view it, it subscribes to, is interested only in remaining in power. And to the extent they're able to distinguish themselves from the others, so that they can say, this is how different I am from the other side, and to the extent that it helps them get votes, they will do so. But beyond that, you cannot expect any credible initiative. Unfortunately, you're not interested in history. An, an average parent is not interested in history. They're only interested in mathematics, physics, science, computer science, and whatnot. So history curriculum is not something that's going to bother anyone, and nobody is going to lose sleep over it. If my son doesn't know good English, I will have a problem with it. But if my son doesn't know Indian history and doesn't know good history, it really doesn't make a difference to me. So since this is, again, a, a storm in a teacup, it's the concern of a minority, of a minority, it really doesn't make a difference. So the only way is for a large number of people to realize that history makes a difference to how we see ourselves in the long run. Products of these schools who come out with these thoughts that there is nothing to Hinduism beyond casteism, beyond sati, beyond burning widows, and beyond widows living in Varanasi, and all these things. If, they, if, if, if we don't realize the dangers of cultivating the next generation which comes up with these kind of thoughts, then I don't see what's the solution. The only way to do this is for these people to branch out altogether. One more thing. Here the problem, I think, is also with control of temples from a different reason. A church can run its own school. Why can't a temple be in a position to run its own educational institution? In a, so that it can further its own traditions, create its own textbooks, explain the history of the particular place to the people who live in that particular place. But then again, it's in, it's in the hands of the government. Release of the temple from the hands of the government will open the doors to a lot of things. You will have the resources to, fi to fight fraudulent conversions. You will have the resources to take care of orphans. Look at it this way. If orphans, by and large, are adopted by institutions of a certain community, and they're constantly told that other communities are either evil or they are caste east and whatnot. Their loyalties to this particular land will be shaken, and they will grow up as deracinated, rootless people who don't owe any allegiance to this particular country. That's the fact. Therefore, if you need those resources, you need to fight. <clears throat> 